There is no one like Jesus. Lord Jesus, we are in your presence. Lord Jesus, we are here. We are here. We are here in your presence. And it is a privilege to be here in your presence. As we gather around your word, Father, we ask that you would rescue me, hide me behind your cross. That these, your people, we hear your words. We hear exactly what you want them to hear. In spite of what I may do and say. Come Holy Spirit. Come Heavenly Dove. Be here with us. And let our hearts be fertile grounds. For which your word can be deposited. And may that word. Grow into fruition. That we may be doers of your word. And not just hearers of your word. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, and I love you. And I love you. We're going to look at the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. The first four verses to get some idea about this love that God says he has for us. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 through 4. This comes from the New Revised Standard Version of our Bible. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Saba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you nations in exchange for your life and I love you. We just want to concentrate on those four verses with that part statement there in verse 4 and I love you and I love you. Valentine's day was just no, but Friday we had the sweetheart ball or banquet on Saturday. There was much love in the place. Uh, we heard, perhaps for the only time this year, people say, I love you. That's OK. Sometimes love is best demonstrated uh, than said. Uh, it's good to know that you are loved, no matter how you receive that message. But, but what is love? What is love? What does real love look like? How does this real love, God's love, feel? If you ask a child what love is, it, it, it may be that child's favorite toy or pillow. 
if you ask a parent that may be looking at that child play or snuggle with that favorite toy or pillow. If you ask a grandparent, the grandparent may say that real love is cuddling your grandchildren, <coughs> having them ask you for a nickel, well, a dollar, <laughs> and, and you're able to give that to that child, no matter what that child wants. <coughs> If you ask a teenager what love is, and after they fight through the cloudiness of hormones, <laughs> they, they, they will give you maybe a response of a close, passionate relationship that's hot. If you ask Al Green, what is love? He may tell you that love sometimes make you do right, and sometimes make you do wrong. Make you come home early, make you stay out all night. There are many types of love, and we want to focus in on what God said about his love. We want to focus in on uh, verses 1 through 4 that will help us with how God loves us and how powerful that is. To put this in context, these people, Israel, in chapter 42, were just like us. They would not listen. And as a result of them not hearing God's word, not keeping God's commandments, God allowed them to be plundered. God allowed them to be trapped. God allowed them to be in the flames of the oppressor. Because they would not listen. Because they left their first love. Because they decided to do their own you know how it is when you have that freedom to do your own thing and you go your own way, you get in trouble, life gets challenging to you, it gets difficult, you need help. That was going on in chapter 42. But I like that Isaiah starts this chapter off with but now. But now, thus says the Lord. Hmm? Thus says the Lord to his people, Israel, Jacob. Thus, thus says the Lord to us today, who are Israel's, Abraham's spiritual seed to us. And he gives us good news. He gives us good news that he created us first. God created us. He created you and me. He created us. He formed us. He knows everything about us. We are not just a mishap. We are fearfully and wonderfully made from God who created us, who knows our deepest woe, our deepest concern. He knows how our heart is, the contents of our hearts. People may look on the outside and see the smile that we wear, but God looks on the inside and see the brokenheartedness that we may have. God knows about us, and that's a good thing because he said, I formed you. I shaped you. I conditioned you as I wanted you to be. And if we would only just have confidence that God has made us as he wanted us to be and not trying to be somebody else, we would be well on our way to having a more blessed life as we do things and say things in accordance to God's will as he has fashioned us. He has redeemed us. He has given